all smolder and oxblood, these flower heads, flames of August. Fierce bronze or murky rose, petals concluded in gold. And as if fire called its double down, the paired gold finches come swerving quick on the branching towers. So the blooms sway with the heft of hungers, indistinguishable now from the blossoms. Tannic, yellow, or rust, a single grassy streak at each mid-petal colluding in a bull's-eye ring. Copper circle around the seed hoard, flashing like a solar flare. You can't finish looking. They rear and wave in Pentecostal variety. You might as well be tracing flames. Maybe nothing gold can stay separate, not feather, flower, fire. My work's to say, what signals here? But Lord, I cannot see a single thing. If I were a sunflower, I would be the branching kind, my many faces held out in all directions, all attention, awake to any golden incident descending, drinking in the world with my myriads of heads, I'd be my looking. Painters have painted their swarming groups in the center figure of all, from the head of the center figure, spreading a nimbus of gold-colored light, but I paint myriads of heads, but paint no head without its nimbus of gold-colored light. Their rattling August clothes, faces of swirl of hours, coil in the seed, unwound at last to these shag faces bent over the running garden. Warm evening, vertical and gold, stalk of the body, glistening hairs radiating out from the uncurled and lifted leaves, paired along the stalk pattern, plunging toward the center like the line of thighs. Paul said when the neighbor's puppy ran across the street into traffic because it wanted to see our dogs, it looked like a little flame. Nothing gold can stand apart from any other the sunflowers are trafficked by birds open to bees and twilight, implicated alert. Fire longs to meet itself, flaring. Longing wants a multiplicity of faces, branching and branching out, heads, mouths, eyes, wishing always to double their own heat, which is why the void can make nothing lasting. The fuse resides in the yellow, candling up, signaling, and the concomitant yellow hurrying down to meet it, and nothing that is fixed can call its double down from heaven. The gold calls to the gold in the ark and rub, calls to itself in the other, which is why the corona seed head flashes the finches down. So this is a poem that I wrote when I was uh, single to my apartment. I'll never forget our first night together, you with your new furniture, me sitting there so satisfied after that last shopping trip, realizing too late we have no toilet paper. I kept you as clean as I could, sorry about those holes in the wall and that junk mail piling up. We didn't have much company the cable guy, a friend or two. Most of the time, it was just me and you. You must have heard my phone conversations. You probably know all my secrets, that hair club fiasco, the Russian dating website, other sites I'd rather not discuss. That time I got hopelessly lost and came home exhausted, cursing MapQuest. You were here for me. The night after my divorce, I cried myself to sleep on your shoulder. Lately, I haven't been here much, and you felt distant and cold. Partly my fault, though, for setting the temperature low. I always liked your countertops. I don't think I ever told you that. It's no use pretending we'll ever see each other again. I'll just leave this by the sink and say goodbye and thanks for everything. We all share our genes, our DNA, 50-50 with mom and dad. But, but, we all have a spill more of DNA 
from mom and every single cell within us in the cell energy place called the mitochondria. It's all mom, 100%. Our energizer system for every cell comes from mom and her specific DNA. Everyone within themselves has this DNA mighty woman strand in every cell of their being. Our energizer places run on ancient women wisdom. This mama strain goes back eons, eons and eons and eons of mama, and we pass it through. We women become conduit. Let us all access this place within. The mitochondria DNA within us, all the mothers call. Down from the generations within us all, our mother's presence, and every cell in the energy fuel place, mitochondria DNA is stamped from our mother's mother's mother and her mother's mother and so on. Endurance, perseverance, consistency. Our mother's wisdom passed down. The girls get to pass it on to their children. The girls' children pass it on again. Women as conduit for the mother wisdom. Boys forever linked in with the mama chain. Mother wisdom comes densely packaged in places like the muscles, the liver, and the brain. Mother wisdom in our thoughts and movements. From mother to daughter, through the generations, the mitochondria stays the same. Ancient codes remain for continuity through matrilineal bloodlines. Night. Night's black velvet gloves steal over the slender fingers of day. The wind whispers at my window. Yellow moon sighs, slips easelessly into my bedchamber. My restless, fear-haunted heart calms. In the garden, Venus loses her white marble image to her eyes to the stars. Thank you. It's called Mass Fairies. They'll find our shoes by the edge of the forest and they'll wonder where we've gone. But don't go out looking for us cause we won't come home and I'd rather play mouse fairies with you than take on the world but I get it again get it again get it again get it again
in her room at the prow of the house where light breaks and the windows are tossed by linden my daughter is writing a story pause in the stairwell, hearing from her shut door a commotion of typewriter keys, like a chain hauled over a gunnel. Young as she is, the stuff of her life is a great cargo, some of it heavy. I wish her a lucky passage. she who pauses as if to reject my thought and its easy figure a stillness greatens in which the whole house seems to be thinking and then she is at it again with a bunched clamor of strokes and again is silent I remember the day's starling which was trapped in that very room two years ago. How he stole in, lifted a sash, and retreated. And how for a helpless hour, through the crack of the door, we watched that sleek, wild, dark, and iridescent creature batter against the brilliance drop like a glove to the hard floor or the desktop and wait there humped and bloody for the wits to try again. And how our spirits rose when suddenly sure it lifted from the chair back, beating a smooth course for the right window and clearing the sill of the world. It is always a matter of life or death, my darling, as I had forgotten. I wish what I wished you before. Only harder. breaks and the windows are tossed by linden my daughter is writing a story in love with jane because it's february i thought i'd still sneak this little story in when i was in eighth grade I thought Jane was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. She was absolutely gorgeous. She had long blonde hair, and she would come into math class, and she sat just one desk away from me. When I wanted to talk to her, I wanted to say hello, and you look lovely today, but all that came out was arr, 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 arr. I mean, in eighth grade, I knew that I liked girls, but I didn't know how to talk to them. And I thought it's so strange. Like, she came into math class, and it was, at the end of September, and I looked over and she had a sleeveless blouse on, and there was a tiny bit of her bra strap showing, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'd never seen anything so erotic in my life. <laughs> but I, I wanted to talk to her, but nothing would come out, and in my little neighborhood where I grew up, I was out in the countryside, and I was friends with Anna. And Anna was a cheerleader in eighth grade, and all the other boys were embarrassed to talk to her because she was a cheerleader. But she lived in my neighborhood, and I had a go-kart, and she would come over and ride my go-kart, and we would hang out. And I just thought Anna was like my sister. Well, you fast forward to February, and I want to go ahead and ask Jane to go to the dance with me for Valentine's, but I was just too nervous. I couldn't ask her, so I wrote this beautiful note, and then I give it to Anna, and I ask her, please take this to Jane, and she says, okay because they were friends. And then at the end of lunch, 
I get the note back. And I, I, I couldn't just open it up right there because I was going into math class and Mr. Mix, the math teacher, if he saw you reading a note, he would grab it out of your hand and read it out loud to the entire class. And I was absolutely positive that Jane was gonna say, oh, Tony, I love you. It'll be beautiful. We'll get married when we're old enough and we'll live together forever. And I waited until math class was done and I ran out of the math class and I run to the bathroom and I get into a stall and I open up that little piece of folded up paper and there were no words on the paper at all. All it was was a candy heart that said, go away. <laughs> and I have to say, it was the sweetest rejection I'd ever gotten. And I just shook my head and wondered about the whole thing and moved on with life. Well, you fast forward many, many years later, I was in Frisch's in Defiance, Ohio. And I looked over, and there was Jane, and there was Anna. And I was talking to them. I walked over and I said, that was so funny when we were eighth grade and you gave me that candy heart. And Jane said, I don't know what you're talking about. And Anna said, Tony, I threw your note away. I'm the one who gave you the candy heart that said, go away. I had a crush on you when you were too blind to see it. And I said, wow, us boys really are blind. But to this day, it's still the sweetest rejection I've ever gotten. <laughs> Hello, Hopkinton. Today, my son Bill and I would like to give you a new view on what life is all about. On the first day, God created the dog and said, Sit all day by the door of your house and bark at anyone who comes in or walks past. For this, I will give you a lifespan of 20 years. The dog said, that's a long time to be barking. How about 10 years? And I'll give you back the other 10. So God agreed. On the second day, God created the monkey and said, Entertain people, do tricks, and make them laugh. For this I will give you a 20-year lifespan. The monkey said, Monkey tricks for 20 years? That's a pretty long time to perform. How about I give you back 10, like the dog did? And God agreed. On the third day, God created the cow and said, you must go into the field with the farmer all day long and suffer under the sun, have calves, and give milk to support the farmer's family. For this, I will give you a lifespan of 60 years. The cow said, that's kind of a tough life. You want me to live for 60 years? How about 20? And I'll give you back the other 40. And God agreed again. On the fourth day, God created humans and said, Eat, sleep, play, marry, and enjoy life. For this I will give you 20 years. Now the human, recognizing a good thing when he sees it, says, only 20 years? Could, I, could you possibly give me my 20 in the 40 that the cow gave back, in the 10 that the monkey gave back, in the 10 that the dog gave back? That makes 80, okay? Okay, said God, you asked for it. <laughs> So that is why for our first 20 years, we eat, sleep, play, and enjoy ourselves. For the, but for the next 40 years, we slave under the sun to support our families. For the next 10 years, we do monkey tricks to entertain the grandchildren. <laughs> and for the last 10 years, we sit on the porch and bark at everybody. <laughs> Life has now been explained to you. <laughs> There is no need to thank us for this valuable information. We're doing it as a public service. By the way, if you're looking for me, I'll be on the front porch. <laughs> thank you very much. My name is Ed Bannett. This is my son, Bill.
They have a medical term for it now. It's called cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome. It's like a heart attack, the doctors say, the same tightness in the chest, the gasping for breath, but in cardiomyopathy, catecholamines flood the body in adrenaline rush, like when you're running from a bear or, or chasing after a bus. Your heart starts pounding, a homegrown river of epinephrine sweating from your adrenal medulla as you obsess over all the words you could have said when she took you in her arms and, and grew soft souvenirs. It's harder to take a breath now. Your catecholamines vasoconstricting your systemic arteries and you're hyperventilating on her everyday words, how she swore you were the love of her life but dumped you because you don't like the distances between people in her home state of Southern California, and your chest feels like a breaking drum, moan, myocytes, hydrophilic heat, and she, she begged you to say anything, but you trashed her favorite store, the one she calls Target, <laughs> making it sound French, because the French understand the nuances of love and retail marketing, as in French fries and French wine and French kisses. Shatam, your heart stutters, stimulating your post-junctional beta-2 interceptors, but you're thinking. Sinto amor, yo soy nada, because you don't know much French, only Spanish, but hey, this was Southern California, which used to be Mexico, which was owned by Spain, the country next to France, so it's okay. <coughs> and you're remembering that moment, sitting in the back of the bus, coming home from the Hollywood Bowl. Her head pressed into your shoulder like a, a little sparrow and your index finger playing with a small pink rose on her left sleeve. Voices swirl around you like strawberries. But you don't hear a thing as you both reconstruct those lyrics to the last song the orchestra played. Il est entré dans mon cœur une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause. They say limerence is the technical term for being in love. Doctors at Johns Hopkins are wondering why older women are more susceptible to cardiomyopathy, that state where limerence is lost, like the last trace of a catecholamine's venal descent. I could tell them the answer. When you press me to your heart, I'm in a world apart, a world where roses bloom. I could tell them the answer. But that'd be like explaining the meaning to the word home, or why Limerence demands her uninflected breath curling around you like a, like a black bear in heat, or like the wheels of a receding bus. Thank you. We love 
Age Camp. And I volunteer for Age Camp TV. And I watch Age Camp TV. And I love Age Camp TV. And I love Age Camp TV. We love Age Camp TV.